Hey everyone, my name's Pupsker, and today in Warframe, we're gonna go over the top 10 most used secondary weapons in Warframe. If you didn't know, Warframe released their 2023 most used weapon stats, so we now know what the strongest most used weapons are. So we'll start off at number 10, all up until number one for the most used secondary weapons in the game. This changes around a ton every year. This year swapped around a lot because of Incarnans, I believe. So yeah, we'll take a look and I'll show off some of the weapons and some of them will be fully built. Some won't be because I don't use all of the weapons that much, right? So let's take a look. And as always, if you end up liking, subscribe, like, and let me know what you like using down below. So let's get to it. So the weapon that is in 10th place is actually the Atomos. Reason being, I believe, is because it's a pretty strong heat weapon, beam weapon, and a lot of people do like using this pretty early on in the game. As well as, I believe it may have gotten a Incarnan variant. I don't know if I'm getting this like mixed up with the Aka Core, but I think the Atomos also got an Incarnan variant, meaning a lot of people can now use the Atomos like more properly in an end game steel path environment. So it's just gotten a lot more popular over time apparently and is now the top 10 most popular secondary weapon it has a good fire rate ammo pickup capacity overall accuracy the magazines also not that bad and since it is a beam weapon it'll shoot out a lot like a kuba nuke or a Sykrin. if you have any other beam weapons if we look at the base stats they're not like insanely high crits good enough status is high enough you know pretty high and it is a fire heat weapon so overall it does have an edge over other weapons. So while I don't have this one built up, sadly, a lot of other people might, it is number 10 in the most popular list. So judge that how you will. Number nine for most popular secondary weapons is the Akakor, a weapon that reaches for its next Vic them even as it kills. With each takedown, this pistol spawns an energy tendril that reaches for a nearby target. So it does have a cool little gimmick going along with it. I don't believe I have mine fully built up whatsoever. Yeah, like nothing on it whatsoever. But if you look at the stats, it is a lower damage weapon. So it's probably more popular mid to early game. Total 11 damage, right? You can't really do much with uh, what I have built here, but I could always throw down lethal torrent stuff like that and hornet strike just for some quick damage the stats overall are decent enough it has higher stat good enough crit and since it is radiation puncture yeah a lot of people might like using it it's another beam weapon because secondary beam weapons have gotten way more popular over the years these are steel path enemies right so it's not really going to be doing much to them but you can see it definitely pokes at the enemies there and if built up fully and if built up well it can do a lot more i just definitely don't have the mods for it it doesn't have a secondary fire just a primary fire and as you can see it does eat up that ammo capacity pretty quickly so Overall, it is a good weapon, I think, earlier and mid-game, but I do definitely do think it falls off later on. Either way, I don't have it built up. Let me know what you think for the Akakor as the number nine weapon for secondaries. Number seven for most popular secondaries are the Dex Furious. Overall, a better mid early game weapon as well. This is my goofy build that I have on it, right? Just some quick stuff, nothing serious. Overall, it's a fast shooting, high capacity weapon, two secondary uh, automatic pistols. The status chance is pretty high, while the crit overall is, yeah, nothing special, right? So we have viral radiation on it, but by default, it is a puncture mixed with some slash and impact. It is a lower damage weapon overall, but it definitely is pretty popular, as you can see. I'm assuming it's popular because a lot of people got it from events and stuff, and it's just a pretty decent weapon overall. Like, as you can see, as long as you throw some mods on it, it'll do some decent enough damage, and it'll shoot out fast, but I have nothing special to throw on it right now. If I, like, do all of my attack buffs, yeah, it'll do a lot more damage, but it's not something that I have built up at all for Steel Path but that's how the weapon operates and shoots. So it is pretty good overall. It does get damage out. It's just not one that's probably best for later game. Either way, you know, let me know what you think of the Dex Furious being the number eight weapon. For number seven, we have the Piranha Prime right here. 
overall is also a very good weapon. Actually one that I have built up. Wow, I actually did it. If you look at the base setup for it, Oh no, I need a clean config. There we go. If you look at the base setup for it, it does 240 total damage. So already a lot more than some others because it's kind of like a shotgun pistol, right? You look at the ammo capacity, not as high pickup, right? Magazines lower. So you're like, okay, a little lower, but damage is higher. Uh, primarily does do slash damage. So you can't really discount that. It has not a lot of uh, status chance because it's like a pellet shotgun, but the crit chance is higher overall. So this is what I have quickly on for a general usage build. It's not like insane God tier build, but it's just, you know, using most of the capacity there. So the damage is on it and it does have a special quirk to it, to my knowledge. Three kills in rapid succession to summon a second ethereal piranha for twice the deadly punch. Right, so a lot of other weapons like Dex Furious, that one didn't have anything special. The uh, Aquacore had the Tendril that spawned up, but the Piranha Prime, it has an entire second Piranha Prime that spawns up. Let me see if I can properly get some kills down here. If not, then I will quickly swap it off Steel Path just so that I have an opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> just so I have an opportunity to actually kill them quickly. I don't want to armor lock them when I'm not trying to fully kill everyone. We'll just spawn up all of these random amalgam bros, right? Have them as level, yeah, whatever, 195. We'll put a 100 so we can kill them easier and then just simulate them. Because I just want to show how the gun works, right? Without Steel Path, they'll probably die a lot easier, but it just does damage. You got to kill the enemies. You do that and then you're good to go. If you want to start using abilities and actually properly killing them, then you can spawn up an entire third one. I'm like, let me just get some headshots here. And then you just spawn up a second one. Oh my God, I can't do it. Can't kill them fast enough. It's my, it's my L boys, it's my L. I'll just turn the level down a lot so I can actually properly quickly kill them. Wait, 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 wait. But that's generally how that's gonna work. You just quickly kill all of your enemies, and then, you know what? You're good to go off that. The Piranha Prime, <clears throat> still a fan favorite amongst many people. It kind of looks weird once you start getting a second one used, but you definitely get a lot more shots in. So it's nice like that. It doubles the ammo. You can start getting a ton more kills. So it's not too bad overall. You just have to start getting your kills ramped up or else you might have kind of a bad time. But hey, that is how you uh, work that weapon right there. So that is the Piranha Prime, right? Not bad overall, not bad overall. The next weapon we have right here is the Lex Prime, an MR8 weapon. Pretty decent overall crit and status and, you know, crit multiplier. So it is somehow number six in most popular. I think it's because it's one of the weapons you can always get from Prime Resurgence. And since as a pistol secondary, it does have decent stats overall. I think a lot of people just like to pick it and then just go along with it. But not a weapon I personally use. I've thrown out mine for my Aclex Prime and I just don't even care about it. But it is pretty popular and it is strong overall. Powerful, accurate pistol, low fire rate and magazine capacity. Very efficient at long range. So yeah, judge that how you will. It is a fan favorite by a lot of people, it seems, coming in at number six. So yeah, if you use it, let me know. Next in at number five, everyone, we have the Spore Lacer Kit Gun Chamber as the primary number five weapon. I know, it's so funny whenever kit guns are on here. So the chamber is what it technically counts and that is the Spore Lacer. I might not have the best setup on my kit gun. I have the loader as the bellows, the grips as the gibber, and these are the overall stats for it. I don't use kit guns like whatsoever. So you'll probably see mine doesn't really have anything on it other than some quick stats. Basic zero stat build, sorry about that, is 103 damage, right? You got your toxin there, 21% status, some crit chance with three crit multiplier. Okay, okay, now, now we're cooking. And overall, not a lot of ammo. We'll see how it shoots if you're kind of curious with just nothing on it. 
Actually, I should probably throw on the mods just to be safe. So it might do a little bit of damage, but it is a apparently popular weapon. Primary shot is that it's an AOE explosive. So you can quickly shoot out a ton of toxin at the enemies. So you can see why it might be a pretty popular weapon to use amongst a lot of people. You can kit it out with high crit and it can do a lot more damage or you can go ham on some status. So that's the general way it shoots. If I had it built up, yeah, maybe it'd be pretty decent, but yeah, like it, hate it. That is the number five top most used secondary weapon in Warframe. It's, uh, number five, who would have guessed, right? So let's go on to number four. The number four most used popular weapon in Warframe for secondaries is the Tenant Psychron. This is my Tenant Psychron right here overall. Base, it has 40% status chance. I know, right? Pretty insane. 20% crit, 18% crit multiplier, 27.6 total damage on mine with inherent heat right now. So this is what I've built it out to be. I built it out to be a general decent enough crit weapon with high status, right? I have Galva Galvanized Shot on it as well as Secondary Merciless could probably take off Galvanized Shot for something like Hornet Strike and it would do better overall, right? But hey, I'm just going to keep on Galvanized Shot for now because it seems pretty fun there. It's a really strong beam weapon. A lot of people like it. And since it's a tenant weapon, it gets a nice juicy damage boost up there. So if we pop off all of our abilities, it starts killing pre people like pretty quickly here. You just shoot it off, there we go, to a ton of enemies and then just watch it go burr. Uh, the added uh, dag of damage is always a treat, but it's a pretty strong weapon overall. Once you start getting like to the base health of the enemies, they just go down like butter because of viral and all that. But taking out the shield just takes a second. Pretty strong overall once you fully build it up. I wish I had mine made a little stronger, but hey, it is what it is. Either way, that's how the Tenet Psychron works there. So love it, hate it. Ah. The number three most used secondary weapon in Warframe is the Epitaph. That's right. Sevagoth's wrist mounted sidearm fires a chilling, slow moving slab guaranteed to slow enemies for easier marksmanship. Charge the shot to fire a punishing high velocity, high critical chance slab that punches through barriers, deals additional headshot damage in Sevagoth's hands. So it is Sevagoth's signature weapon. I have a small build on it, nothing super good at all. I would not brag about this or anything. And it just does a ton of general damage. If you charge shot, it's a lot of crit, okay? And if you quick shot, it's not a lot. It's only status. So quick shot for status more so, charge shot for crit, and then build it off there. How it shoots is as follows. Little quick shots like that, not bad. And then charge shot. Not too shabby. Charge shot doesn't explode because it punches through. So if we quickly want to spawn up some enemies, we can see how that works, right? So charge shot, right? Can just go through them. Boom, hit a bunch of enemies. I was shooting it higher before, so it wasn't punching through, but there you go, it punches through. And then you can just do that AOE shot and hit everyone. So you can make it an AOE status spreader like that, or yeah, just punch through everyone. Oh, look at that, right? Not bad. A little double headshot, a little cheeky double headshot. It's up to you. Build it however you so choose, but yeah, it does like a ton of damage, okay? It's a good weapon, and I would recommend it if you like that style of weapon. The number two most used top secondary weapon is the Latum, a new incarnate weapon that has come to Warframe with the Zeremin update. I have a pistol skin on it. It looks pretty cool. I have that extra 2000 damage, right? My general build on it, since you can't put real crit on it, is to throw on good status and good damage overall. But since it can't do crit, that's really all your options are, right? You have damage and you have status. Can't do crit, so you could do multi-shot bonuses, right? So that's why we have some lethal torrent on there as well. We could throw on, yeah, we still have galvanized diffusion, right? So you got a limited amount of options if you're taking out any sort of crit. You can throw on stuff like accelerated isotope too, right? Auger packed, not too shabby. 
but I have a lot of damage on it and a lot of status, so it does do good job of murdering all of the enemies overall, right? How the Latum Incarnate works, right? You gotta hit headshots to build up the boost of it. It's already really strong because it's built up. But once you build it up, you turn it into Incarnate mode and it turns into a automatic explosive gun. And yeah, you pretty easily kill everyone with it, right? No contest. If we were properly running a normal steel path where I got some ramped kills, it would probably do pretty well, but that's how the Latum works. And then you turn off Incarnate mode and ah, it goes back to its nice, cute little pistol form. So it's a really strong weapon overall. 10 out of 10, would recommend. Last but not least, everyone, we have the Kuva Nucor, okay? This is the number one most used secondary in the game lately. It has a ton of damage, but the overall damage isn't high, right? 27.5. It's a 50% status chance weapon, so an insane status spreader. And it has a really low base crit chance with 7%, but a really high base crit multiplier with 5x. So I have a general goofy build on it with status and crit, overall corrosive radiation. While it does do decent damage overall, it's probably not the ideal build. You probably wanna build this so that it spreads a ton of status and does good damage overall. But I digress. I build this weapon however I so choose, and I think I have a fire progenitor Progenator? Progenator? Anyways, I have a fire, I believe, Kuva Lich that this came from. I think, but maybe not. So it is going to be maybe not the most optimal type of Kuva Nucor setup, but it's still a Kuva Nucor, so it's still insanely strong. If you want to see, you just chain all the enemies and then go burr. They kind of blow up a bit when you where you hit them because of, you know, I guess radiation go burr, or because the Kuva Nucor kind of highlights their weak point, right? So it makes them grow a bit. But that's how the Kuva Nucor kills right there. Yeah, it's pretty good, right? Ah, you're watching it, you're like, you know what? That is a good weapon. And then you just have to build up your, like, secondary Merciless or whatever you have on it to do even more damage. It's a good secondary, and I use it a ton myself. Out of the top tens, I use the Latum, I use the Kuva Nucor, and I use the Tenant Sycrin, but other than that, I don't use a ton of the other weapons all that much, so... Let me know what you think of the 10 most top used secondary weapons in Warframe. While a lot of them I don't care to use, hey, a lot of you might be using them right now. So if you have good builds on them, yeah, let me know. Either way, it's a good stuff. So cheers, cheers, everybody.